Hi and welcome to the first in this series of video tutorials which will cover using Moodle 2. Over the course of the series we're going to be building an example course, starting with some of the more basic things you might need to do as a member of staff, and finishing with some of the more advanced features which you might not be aware of, especially if you haven't yet used Moodle 2. Right, this first video is going to deal with some of the basic course settings and it's generally going to talk about where you might want to start if you're faced with a blank course. If you're familiar with Moodle, you may want to skip this tutorial. Go ahead and do so. Um, each tutorial does build upon the last to some extent as we'll be building this course throughout the series, but it shouldn't be too difficult to follow as long as you join at the right place. Right, let's get started. So, where do you start when you're faced with a blank course? Well, there are a few things which are apparent there's no content in the course, it hasn't got a proper course name as we can see from up here, and all of our sections are named by dates starting from today. And while I'm building this course on the 14th of May, I don't intend anyone to see it till September, so that's a bit useless. Right, as long as you're enrolled as a teacher on the course, which requires either another teacher or a member of the ILT team to do, you'll be able to see this Turn Editing On button at the top right of the screen. If you go ahead and click that, it will allow us to make some changes to the course. Now editing's turned on, we can see that the course looks quite different. We've got quite a few buttons appearing next to our News Forum, which is actually the only activity or resource currently on our course. You'll also notice that each section has an Add an Activity or Resource button. If we click this, we'll see that there is, there's a big long list of activities and resources to choose from. We'll be looking at some of these later on in the series. So, firstly, let's change the name to something a little more sensible than 12345. To do this, you'll want to find your course administration block on either the left or the right hand side of your screen. And you want to click Edit Settings. These are the settings for the entire course. OK, when that's loaded, you'll be faced with all of the general course settings for your course. If we scroll down, we can see the extent of these. We won't worry about most of them just yet, but there are a couple towards the very top of the page which will be useful at this point in time. Now, as you can see, the course full name and the course short name are different in this case and it's actually the course short name which is appearing at the top of our course up here. The course full name appears in other areas of the site, such as if a student searches for a course, they'll find a list of course full names. Most of the time, you'll want these two to be exactly the same, so I'm going to copy the course full name and paste it into there. The course ID number, that can remain blank, we don't need that for the time being. And the course summary, this can also remain blank. A time when you might need the course summary is if you have two courses that have virtually the same name and you want to differentiate the two. This is because the course summary only appears when students are searching through lists of courses. Anyway, we'll leave that blank for the time being. Another thing we want to change is the format. Now, I said earlier that a problem with our course was that it was set out in weeks, whereas really I want to set it out as topics, and each topic can have its own title. That makes a lot more sense for the type of course that I'm going to be creating. So I'll click that, wait for it to load. Okay, so now that's gone through. We've got some other options down here, formatting options for topic format. Now we choose the number of topics we want in our course. But we can just leave that at 10 for the time being because this can always be changed at a later date. We can remove topics, we can add topics. We don't even need to come into the settings to do that. So I'm going to leave it at 10 for the time being, even though I expect only to need about 5 or 6. Hidden sections. Now, I'm happy for hidden sections to be shown in collapsed form. Um, I don't intend to have any, but you might want to keep that. It's only for the teacher's benefit rather than the student's benefit. And the course layout, 
I want all the sections to be on one page. Whereas another option is one section per page, so the students have to click from the course to access each of your topics. But that's all fine for the time being. We're not going to worry about any of the lower options for now, but we're going to click Save Changes at the bottom. Once that's saved, it should return us to our course and it should look slightly different. Okay, so as you can see, our weeks have been replaced by topics. Now we can go in and change the name of these topics to whatever we like by clicking this grey cog here, which is actually the settings for, for that, and currently uses the default section name, which is topic 1. So I'm going to unclick that default name and choose my own name, which will be Introduction. OK, so let's move on to the next topic of our course. We'll leave the introduction for the time being. So I want this to be a student information section containing perhaps a timetable, um, exam information, optional modules, etc. So rather than renaming the topic, which I'll probably do later on, I'm going to add a label to this section. Now, if you haven't come across labels before, they're essentially a box which will appear within your section and it, contain what it, it can contain whatever you want such as images, text, video, etc. What it can't contain is activities and resources. So if you want any of these, you need to add them above or below the label. They can't be contained within. So to get a label up, you simply add an activity or resource choose label from the list and then click add. Probably take a moment to load but when it has done you'll see this box here which says label text. That's a bit uh, deceiving really because within this we can have whatever you like. My student information block is going to have first an image so there's a button here that says insert or edit image I'm going to find an image and it, since it's on my computer I'm going to upload it and here it is, information. So I'll open that and upload. There it is, as you can see it's a little big at the moment but I'll insert it anyway. Okay. And I just need to go and resize this quickly so it's not so inappropriately large just dragging the corner inwards so we've got a slightly smaller and I think that's big enough now this is a text editor just like Microsoft Word or something you're probably familiar with so I won't bother explaining all of the process behind this now underneath this image I'm going to add some text which I actually have in my clipboard already so I'm going to paste that in like this welcome to the course we hope you enjoy it and make the most of this VLE etc now save and return to course and you'll see that when this loads our label is here if we scroll over it, it goes a different colour. OK, so we've got our header, but where's our actual student information? Now, as is often the case, all of my student information is in my documents as either Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, or Excel spreadsheets. So. Moodle 2 has actually got something called drag and drop which can potentially save you a lot of time and in order to use this all you do is you have both your screens so you can see them at the same time and you take you drag one of your Word documents from my documents into Moodle and you'll notice that when you drag it over Moodle you'll get a little box which says add files here and that's exactly where I want to add the files so I'll add that there and I'll add another one of these here there we have it some student information 
added to our course, simple as that. Now, if you are stuck using an older version of Internet Explorer, this won't work. Um, ideally, download either Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome. Uh, these are both free and work in just the same way as Internet Explorer, but they could make your life considerably easier in the long run. But, as I said, if you're stuck with an old version of Internet Explorer, you have to add files like this. You go to Add an Activity or Resource, choose File, click Add. You just wait for it to load. And then you're given the option to select files from down here. OK, and you click Add, Upload Files, just in the same way that you saw me upload an image just now. I won't go through that process, but it's relatively straightforward. I'm going to go back to my course by clicking the course name up at the top of the page. And I'm back here. So our course is already starting to come together. We've now got a label, and we've got several bits of student information that they can check into. OK, I think I'm going to leave this video tutorial here. Um, I hope it's been useful. And just to recap, in this tutorial we looked at some useful course settings, such as the name of the course, which appears up here. We also changed the weekly format to a topics format, which uh, removes the time constraint from our course. And we've ex briefly explored labels and adding files to the course using the new Moodle 2 drag and drop feature. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking a little more at resources. So I hope you can join us for that. Hi and welcome to the first in this series of video tutorials which will cover using Moodle 2. Over the course of the series we're going to be building an example course, starting with some of the more basic things you might need to do as a member of staff, and finishing with some of the more advanced features which you might not be aware of, especially if you haven't yet used Moodle 2.